This information can be able to shock anyone. A seven-year-old startup was valued at $150 per stock back in 2020, and now they are facing bankruptcy. Can you guess who? It's Astra Space Company, which was founded in October 2016 by Chris Kemp and Adam London. However, Astra's failure is not difficult to understand. The rocket business is inherently new and full of risks, so the number of newcomers to this field who are eliminated from the game is not few. SpaceX, in its early days, also virtually fell into a similar situation as Astra, but ultimately, they got rid of that and later achieved the prosperity as currently. So why did Astra fail while SpaceX did not? What can Astra learn from SpaceX's case for redevelopment? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On November 8, 2023, two founders of Astra submitted a proposal to take the company private at an original price of $1.50 per share meaning a decrease of 1% compared to the value three years ago. The value of publicly traded Astra Space has been falling since it shelved a rocket design that only went for two for seven on launches, including two highly visible failures from the Space Coast. Now the company is going private. Once valued at more than $2.1 billion, the Alameda, California-based company closed at about $20 a share on the NASDAQ stock market in February 2021, months before its first orbital success with its Rocket 3 design. It has since made a steady drop in value, including the threat of delisting from NASDAQ last year and the potential for bankruptcy looming. That's the thing with startups that go high. They often go high largely based on the hype and take a long time or never to achieve a profitable and sustainable business. So what has happened to the company over the years? 2018 marked the launch failures of two suborbital test flights conducted from Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska, one on 20 July 2018, Rocket 1.0, and one on 29 November 2018, Rocket 2.0. Astra spent 2019 designing and building Rocket 3.0 integrating propulsion systems, avionics, and other pressurization slash plumbing components into a high-performance electric pump-fed orbital launch vehicle. It was planned to launch from Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska, with attempted launches in late February and early March 2020, with the last launch attempt on 2 March 2020. However, on 23 March 2020, the vehicle was destroyed by fire during launch preparations. The second attempt using the second Rocket 3 vehicle, Rocket 3.1, was planned for September 2020, but failed during the first stage flight. By then, Rocket 3.1 experienced an anomaly and fell back to Earth shortly after, and exploded on impact in a part of the spaceport that was cleared of personnel before launch. On 15 December 2020, Astra launched its third Rocket 3 vehicle, called Rocket 3.2. The rocket successfully passed the KRMN line and reached its target orbital altitude of 390 kilometers, a first for Astra. However, due to issues with the upper stage's propellant mixture ratio, the rocket failed to achieve orbit. Finally, the company managed to reach orbit on 20 November 2021 with a Rocket 3.3 vehicle during a demonstration flight for the Space Force from Alaska. And that led to its first successful launch attempt from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in March 2022. The spaceflight Astra-1 mission marked Rocket 3.3 return to flight and reached orbit. After Astra-1, the Rocket 3's final straw came during an attempt to launch NASA's Tropics-1 mission from the Cape later that summer. But it failed to reach orbit and its pair of hurricane tracking satellites were lost during second stage issues as well. NASA had lined up Astra Space to launch three Tropics missions, but ended up shifting the remaining two to competitor Rocket Lab. Astra turned its attention to designing a bigger and what it aimed to be a more reliable rocket for with initial aims to fly it this year, although progress on that effort remains uncertain. Investing in R&D and testing rockets has caused a huge loss for the company's budget. In 2022, they had a net loss of $411.4 million while the revenue was just $9.4 million. The 2023 situation was also not brighter with $178.4 million of net loss and $3.9 million of revenue. As a result, in early 2024, Astra repeatedly considered filing for bankruptcy due to difficulties raising cash. To be honest, 
The fact that newcomers in this area falling into bankruptcy is not strange because the rocket business is essentially expensive and risky. Remember that SpaceX also came close to collapse many times during its wild days. Three consecutive failures of Falcon between 2006 and 2008 almost pushed the company into a nightmare and at the same time, Musk was also facing issues with financing at Tesla. Another example in 2021, Elon Musk sent a letter to his employees the day after Thanksgiving, in which the billionaire said the rocket company could be at genuine risk of bankruptcy unless it could speed up production of the Raptor engines that power its Starship rockets. However, in contrast to many failure cases, Elon Musk and Gwynne Shotwell are very talented in saving a business from death and developing it so quickly. At present, other than SpaceX, none of the new space companies are profitable yet. Most of them will not be. Even SpaceX has lost a lot more money than it has made if you count 20 years of R&D costs and not just marginal costs for each launch. Even now, developing Starship probably eats up all the profits they make from Starlink and Falcon 9 launches. So, what is SpaceX's secret? One efficiency strategy that Gwynnie discovered is residual capability referring to building profitable business lines around technology you already have in order to support longer-term projects. A few great examples of residual capability in this case include Starlink. We've all seen SpaceX launch satellites for other companies, but along the way, Gwynnie realized that by launching their own satellites, they could create a sustainable business on Earth. In addition, their Dragon spacecraft project also demonstrated great financial efficiency. And the billion-dollar contracts under NASA's commercial resupply programs partly helped the company live sustainably until now. Nevertheless, SpaceX's focus has always been on rockets. By the iterative approach in manufacturing rockets, they can create reusable and very reliable rockets like Falcon and Starship in the future. See, the cost of each incremental SpaceX launch is decreasing over time. Every time they launch another rocket, they learn important lessons and become a more efficient company. Low cost and high quality are truly SpaceX's trump cards in the fiercely competitive market not to mention Shotwell's top-notch sales skills. There is an interesting story that when first joined SpaceX, Shotwell was immediately assigned an unbelievable task by Elon Musk, selling some rockets that did not exist and had not flown before, of course. To do it, she began meeting with the United States government agencies and satellite companies to begin to persuade them to book launches on their still unflown Falcon 1 rocket. Thanks to that, the young unicorn SpaceX by then had its very first contracts with some private companies, and more notably NASA. All this happened before the rocket reached orbit. The initial contract with NASA brought the company a $278 million contract and long-term cooperation with that tycoon. The tight relationship with NASA and the master marketing strategy pushed the company to go much further, given that it can earn another large amount of revenue by serving in military missions that's where the rockets in heavy segments like Falcon Heavy and Starship come in. You know, launch prices for NASA and military payloads run higher than SpaceX's base commercial price. Government satellites often require special handling, resulting in extra fees in some terms like engineering insight, unique cleanliness specifications, and in some cases, scheduled priority over other commercial missions. In conclusion, the excellent strategies in terms of business and manufacture, advanced technologies, diversification in product terms, and innovation are SpaceX's secret weapons to get the monopoly position on the market as we see today. Astrospace is also among the few who were able to make orbit, but a lack of consistency in successful delivery hurt finances. The company announced plans on March 7 to go private in a deal with the company's founders, and in order to be able to redevelop, they certainly must learn many things from SpaceX. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.